الستيشن الايج بالظبط شكرا دلوقتي هن هنسمع دكتوره سندس مدرس مساعد في الوحده هتقدم كيس برزنتيشن ارجو سندس ما تطوليش عشان نلتزم لان احنا اوريدي متاخرين شوف انا اخدت الميكروفون عشان اقول الكلمه دي <تصفيق> ماشي اتفضل <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Uh, it's an honor to uh, be here and share this platform with my dear professors and colleagues. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia behind the scene. We present a case of nine-day-old patient, 36 weeks gestational age, third order of birth of non-consanguinous parents. This patient was referred to our NICU with persistent vomiting starting day one of life. Perinatal history, the antenatal history was uneventful. The mother was 32 years old, gravid 3, para 3. The patient was delivered by lower segment cesarean section due to previous cesarean section and oligohydramins. The patient was 36 weeks gestation with upgrade score eight and nine at one and five minutes. Birth weight was 2.25 kilograms. He had persistent vomiting since birth. Our patient had two living healthy saplings with no history of similar condition, no history of congenital anomalies or sapling deaths. The complaint was non-pelious vomiting starting day one of life. The condition started day one of life with persistent vomiting, yellowish in color, not related to fats. Patient passed three to, three to four times stool per day with no history of abdominal distension. The patient was on exclusive breastfeeding from day one to day four of life. On day four of life, the parent sought medical advice, anti-reflux medication, artificial feeding and anti-reflux treatment was started without any improvement. On day seven of life, patient continued to have persistent vomiting and was admitted on IV fluids, NPO in external hospital, also with no improvement. The condition was associated with significant weight loss from 2.25 kilograms to 1.7 kilograms over nine days. The patient was referred to our unit on day nine of life. On presentation, the patient was fully conscious, active, and dehydrated. Capillary fill time was four to five seconds, blood pressure 85 over 65, random blood sugar 140, heart rate 140, and respiratory rate 55. The chest, cardiac, abdomen, and neurological examination were free aside from the genital examination. The genital examination showed clitoromegaly with no palpable testes, the presence of urethral and vaginal openings. The labs on admission showed normal CBC and CRP, bone, create calcium, ALT, phosphorus, and magnesium were all normal. However, the sodium was 131, potassium 6.5, the VPG showed pH 7.39, CO2 12, and bicarb 12. Fluid resuscitation was initiated and the initi with initial clinical and rapidity improvement, sodium elevated to 140 and potassium 5.9. The VPG improved to pH 7.4, CO2 40, and bicarb 19. What's our differential diagnosis? The first thing we think of was congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Given the history of the presence of abnormal genitalia, hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, 17 hydroxyprogesterone was withdrawn. Pelvic abdominal ultrasound showed female internal genitalia with no adrenal abnormalities. Other causes suggested were the surgical cause. However, the pelvic abdominal and X-ray erect was fine with normal. Inborn in error of soft metabolism, serum, ammonia, lactate, extended metabolic were normal. Causes related to type of milk. However, the patient was NPO since day seven of life with persistence of vomit. Shortly after admission, the patient had attack of tachycardia, respiratory distress in form of tachypnea, and subcostal retractions, capillary fill time prolonged to four to five seconds, blood pressure 80 over 65, random blood sugar 130, heart rate 160, and respiratory rate 65. The VPG showed again uh, metabolic acidosis 7.15, CO2 44 and bicarb 13.8, sodium 124 and potassium 5.3. This, this, this deterioration was attributed to decompensation of congenital adrenal hyperplasia and adrenal crisis. Laboratory investigations were withdrawn and patient received single stress dose hydrocortisone, 25 milligram followed by regular doses of hydrocortisone, 10 milligram every six hours. Fludrocortisone tablets were added 0.1 milligram per day with a strict follow-up of blood pressure, random blood sugar, serum electrolytes and VBG. Patient needed respiratory support, was pumped on non-invasive positive pressure ventilation and maintenance IV fluids. We then received the result of 17 hydroxyprogesterone, which was elevated to 5.4. 
After this management, the patient improved rapidly. Non-invasive ventilation was shifted to nasal CPAP, and then the patient was off any respiratory support within 24 hours with improvement of tolerance to all intake. We then had the investigations available that showed that the 17 hydroxyprogesterone was elevated, ACTH was elevated, and cortisol showed very low levels. The androgens were elevated, free testosterone was high, the DHE is high, and androstenedone was high. The karyotyping was 46XX. Our patient was discharged at home, tolerating full oral intake with no vomiting, discharged on oral hydrocortisone tap 3 mg per day and oral fludrocortisone tablets 0.1 mg per day. Our take home message from this patient was to keep a very high level of suspicion of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Once suspected, investigate and initiate treatment. In suspected cases, avoid early gender determination till thorough investigations are done. Adrenal crisis presentation could resemble sepsis. Also, sepsis and stress could trigger adrenal crisis. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia is a life threatening condition. Early diagnosis and treatment is life saving. Thank you. شكرا دكتور سندس على البرزنتيشن بتاعتك مختصره وواضحه وحاله جميله دلوقتي احنا هنسمع دكتور نرمين حسين استاذه اطفال واندوكرينولوجيست معلش هي نرمين عندها ظروف كوفيد هي نيجاتيف بس مخالطه يعني لجوزها وابنها ربنا يشفيهم باذن الله فهي هتتكلم مسجله لنا محاضره وهتقولها دلوقتي هيك Sabah uh, al-khair. First of all, I would like to thank Zamaili and Khwati and Asdaqai and Asadzitti for this kind invitation. I would like to hope that we will be with each other in person, but in the future, we will be able to see each other in the next few days. What I'm going to speak to to you about today is um, adrenal insufficiency in the neonate. And uh, basically, 